Hey what's up guys it's Oakley and you may notice this is not Rome 2. I am going to be playing Napoleon in this battle. So I used to play a lot on Napoleon and Empire back in the day. I've only ever really posted uh, Rome 2 videos on this channel mostly just because when I started this channel you know that's what we were hyping up for but I am a big fan of the other Total War games. Um, played Shogun 2 initially you know I may be doing some throwbacks to these games especially when I myself am feeling like I, I would benefit from a little bit of variety, breaking free from just uh, the Roman traditions, and I feel like you guys will also enjoy some of these battles. This one in particular was a 2v2 I played, so I hopped in the other day into Napoleon, I reinstalled it on my Steam account, and I kind of forgot what all the dynamics were to the game and all that, so this is going to be my third battle uh, into the multiplayer. I played a series of 2v2s, and I felt this was the best that I wanted to share, so at this point I've gotten a bit more the hang of it. I'm still not totally familiar with the uh, the various tactics uh, or the specifics of each individual units and the balancing, the range, and all that stuff, but you know, basically warfare is warfare. A lot of the same tactics are unchanging, uh, and primarily that's going to be aggression and uh, outmaneuvering your opponent. So that's kind of be kind of going to be my tactic in this one. Anyways, I'm going to be feeling the Prussian army here facing off against Austrians on my side. My ally is going to be the British and he's going to be facing the French over here on this side of the field. So he's going to be advancing towards the bridge. This particular map was interesting because it wasn't an open field. Uh, I can't remember the exact name of the map. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it just because I, I don't really like the uh, the choke points here. But in this battle, it actually ended up being very, very uh, interesting how the choke points played out. So in any case, I'm being very aggressive with my cavalry here, pushing them forward. Uh, I did realize my opponent right here had howitzers. So my goal was to just intimidate those guys, force them to deploy uh, prematurely. So you can see that's what I'm doing here, pushing forward with my cavalry. My opponent is going to set up his howitzers right here. The benefit of that is that it's going to allow my guys to move forward. If I allowed my opponent to keep pushing forward, his howitzers would be set up in the middle of the field and he would be able to just barrage the entirety of my side as I push up. So I was trying to kind of secure a beachhead for my forces to move up. I do have my artillery piece right there. Rules for this battle were just one piece of artillery per team. Uh, you couldn't have fixed artillery and then a maximum of six skirmishers. So those are the traditional Napoleon rules that you'll see a lot of the custom battles. Anyways, this is the bridge that I'm crossing, so I really didn't want artillery shooting down on my guys here. So that's why I made sure to push forward with my cavalry. The howitzers are good because they can shoot up and over buildings and hills and not have direct line of sight. However, they do have the tendency to uh, not be super accurate, and even if a shot does hit you, it has the opportunity to uh, detonate in the air and not necessarily do too much damage. So that's a trade-off you get with the howitzers. Uh, in any case, I'm moving up with all of my cavalry, essentially. And uh, my goal is now to rush forward and push back my opponent. He thinks I'm just being timid at this point. So that's good. I'm baiting him in. And uh, now I'm going to fly up with my artillery piece here. And you'll see trying to deploy on the hill. Now my columns of infantry are streaming in from the side. They're going to be a perfect flanking attack to help support the cavalry push here. So a lot of Napoleon is going to be coordination and timing uh, because a lot of conflict here relies on uh, sort of how the volleys play out between your various armies. Uh, you kind of have to time uh, when you want to move forward, when to retreat, when to reinforce, who's targeting who. Uh, there's a lot of those dynamics which you don't really get in uh, Rome 2. Uh, because archers are just kind of continuous volleys of fire and they don't have the kind of uh, staggered amounts of death that you see with these units. In case, uh, cavalry is also going to be a huge component of this and uh, sort of the, the warfare of mobility is very important. Anyway, I'm charging in his cavalry cavalry with two of my light troops. However, my light troops are going to be best at the charge. They catch his guys unawares. My cavalry is coming in in the back, and two of my additional cavalry troops are going to be coming in. I want to make sure I finish off his troops as quickly as possible because I am in range of his own howitzers. He's going to be shooting in on me. So I wheel in with my uh, artillery. I'm going to deploy them. My hopes are that when his cavalry come to deploy, I can just switch to canister shot and essentially blast them in the face. So mopped up one of his units there. I'm going to be pulling back. However, I forgot how long it took for my artillery to disengage and uh, cavalry, especially in this game, are very, very quick. So he gets up to me before I can even uh, have my artillery ready. That's going to be a little bit of a problem. So I do go ahead and counter charge with some of my troops. Something you'll notice is uh, also when I am charging with my various units, I don't charge in with every single unit. It's more beneficial to charge in with one or two to hold and then charge in with another group to attack from the flank. So that's exactly what you see me doing here with my Ulans, uh, or no, my Light Lancers moving from the side. I'm also positioning my guys up here to take advantage of his cavalry position on that flank. And uh, more infantry are coming in. 
uh, my own six, uh, I think those are six pounders or 12 pounders, I can't remember, but they're going to be putting on the pressure. Uh, my opponent does pull his Ulans through my guys with the attempt of knocking out my, caval my uh, yeah, cavalry mounted uh, artillery. It's a smart move. It's not going to outright kill them, but it means that uh, my horses are going to run away, so I'm not going to be mobile anymore. Anyways, he does react to my move here, so my troops are just going to get uh, in line at the last second. They're going to be getting hit, but you can see here I get off some pretty good volleys, devastating volleys against his troops. Right here, I did mop up some of his cavalry, and he's charging through. My opponent is being a little bit, uh, well, I guess, I, I would say reckless, but at the same time, he is being kind of effective. He's pushing through, he knocked out my artillery, and now he's pulling right through my cavalry to attack um, some of my skirmishers. So, pretty decent move on my opponent's part. Better than just having them lose outright to my cavalry. He's going for my weakest troops. Uh, I didn't actually manage to save those cavalry that charge rent to my opponent's forces. I wasn't microing those guys well enough, so I did lose some of my most weakened troops. Um, yeah, the six pound horse artillery is now going to be a fixed artillery piece, but at least it's stationed in a good position. Over here, my reinforcements were able to help uh, destroy the cavalry who are coming in, and now I'm going to be moving in with the entirety of my force pushing up. I do have, if you look in the very back on the right, and, and on the mini map, I do have some guys creeping up in the center of the map. Now those are hidden forces. I was hoping to have them stationed there to pick off some of his units, uh, but uh, I neglected to take care of them. And you'll see if you watch the mini map every once in a while, uh, the cavalry of the Austrians is just going to go ahead and charge forward. Now even though my guys are hidden, uh, those cavalry are going to expose them. So because I wasn't microing, I wasn't able to deploy stakes in time. In any case, uh, when you're looking to press the advantage in this game, it's really all about uh, matching up the correct units against the enemy. Uh, take a look at the minimap. Also, you can see I'm getting off shots against his cavalry. Uh, that's why that triangle in the middle of the minimap is blinking. So I was able to do some damage to his guys as they move forward. Take him to half strength, but now he's going to finish me off. Um, so relatively a decent exchange, I would say. Anyways, back to the tactics I was talking about. So... Um, always you have to think what's the most effective way to counter uh, what you're facing. So for instance, see how there are those guys over on this side of the battlefield? Instead of charging forward with my cavalry or redeploying my artillery, what I'm doing is I'm moving forward my skirmishers. My skirmishers outrange him, I'm able to do the most amount of damage without taking any damage. So every time your opponent does something, try and see how you can counter it uh, in the most effective way. So by doing as much damage, by taking as little damage as possible. So let's go on to the next problem that I have to deal with, which is going to be the center of the field. My opponent is moving forward with two, uh, I believe it's either Jaegers or Grenzers that he's moving forward with. In any case, that's going to be a pretty heavy component of light infantry that I'm going to have to deal with. And yeah, over here, this is where I noticed that my guys were engaged. You can see I did take his guys down to about 12 units, so relatively effective, but he does take out some of my higher end troops, uh, sadly. And the French are now going to redeploy around my flank. But back to the center, so I have one of these skirmisher units facing off against two of my opponent's uh, own skirmishers. Now my thinking is at this point that I need to take those guys out. He's going to outmatch me in the center, so I need to knock those guys out. If I can knock out his skirmishers, then my own skirmishers will be at leisure to pick off his guys at a distance. So that's kind of the thinking you'll see me doing. So I get off the initial volley, I'm going to follow that up with a full-on cavalry charge. And the cavalry charge is additionally going to allow my own infantry to move up. On the left, you also saw that I pulled back my own infantry. Um, no need to allow his guys to get too close to me. I'm just going to keep kiting them. And uh, here we go, the combined assault. French are also charging in from the side. Howitzers are barraging my units. I'm going to be redeploying these guys to face the French in the near future. Anyways, these guys are going to get destroyed by my incoming cavalry. His infantry are going to get some pretty good shots off of my guys. Keep in mind though that um, accuracy at a distance is pretty important here. Uh, even though it looks like he's getting off a lot of shots, a lot of them are not going to uh, strike home. So I land a very good assault, back that up just perfectly in time with my infantry to be essentially point blank with these guys. So the shock and awe of a cavalry charge backed up by my infantry volleys is going to be enough to crack him. Once he's lost those Grenzers, well then I am left with the superiority in range and I can deal death and destruction. Additionally, these cavalry troops are not going to be completely idle. They're going to come in and attack these Fusilier over on that side. So I'm making the most of my infantry, constantly pulling back these skirmishers if they get too close to the action. No need to have any losses there. And here we go, point blank against these Grenzers. Uh, my line infantry are going to tear those guys a new one. In any case, my opponent here believes that he's caught me unawares. However, I am watching the back 
and all these troops are now going to redeploy uh, every single one of them and it looks like he's going to be going for a general snipe this is something you see pretty often in Napoleon uh, the cavalry will get around the backs pretty often however he does have a, a brief micro lapse you can see right here his cavalry did stop moving I guess they are cavalry with uh, guns so um, yeah some sort of dragoon unit anyways I'm able to get some shots off on them and they were hoping to snipe my general but I'm going to keep pulling him off to safety in any case here this cavalry charge was entirely brutal uh, just slaughtered that flank and this entire front right here is now shut down uh, so I'm going to have to fight a two front war but it's one that I can handle uh, France here was so eager to catch me in the back that his troops are exhausted and they're not in the perfect formation meanwhile right here you can see I did destroy his skirmishers up front that's going to allow me to pick off his forces at my own leisure uh, with my own skirmishers however a problem still persists in that he has those howitzers still doing a lot of damage to me here we go his guys are positioned up here they're a little too exposed so I'm gonna move the majority of my forces up to the river try and get some initial shots off against his guys um, the Austrians here notice that that's a problem they're retargeting their howitzers to get my guys at the river he's hoping to allow the French to come to his uh, his assistance in any case, my artillery is putting in some shots at his own artillery. I figured I could target his infantry, but I'd rather knock out those howitzers. If I was able to knock out his howitzers, then my opponent right there is uh, entirely outclassed. I'm left with cavalry, light infantry, and artillery. There's nothing he can do. He would just be at the mercy of my superior range, and he'd be forced to come to me. Um, anyways, I'm not going to sit idly. I'm going to charge my cavalry around the flanks. Uh, this is, of course, very historically accurate, particularly when you talk about Napoleonic tactics. So, um, the French army after the revolution was uh, relatively revolutionary, at least the tactics of it were. So this is coming after an age of linear tactics, essentially where you have musket armed troops facing each other, sort of in a, in, in a noble way or in a more organized way. Linear tactics, I say that because basically troops would come onto the field of battle in lines and just shoot at each other, um, and it was seen as a more, um, how can I say this, organized way to do battle. Um, the battles would be relatively quick and it was um, kind of like okay an official thing we both be on the field we shoot each other people with the best drill and morale will go ahead and win and there won't be too many casualties now um, what happens with Napoleon and some of the innovations from the French uh, tacticians and generals is uh, they do sort of a uh, they change from these linear tactics to a battle of mobility so something that you see actually that had been happening before the French tacticians put this into place was uh, the use of mass artillery. This is something that Napoleon wholly uh, just embraces. So you see a lot of uh, French heavy artillery. In fact, Napoleon actually served with the artillery, I believe, when he was in um, the, uh, the Italian campaigns fighting the Austrians. I think it was an officer. In any case, uh, back to the French tactics. So they were kind of uh, all about mobility, and so what they did was they relied on massive artillery barrages, cavalry, kind of a shock and awe to break the opponents, and uh, they reformed the French military. Uh, one of the advantages they had was the levé en masse. So that's essentially when you have the, um, because of the ideals of the French Revolution and the fact that the army was now, you know, uh, headed by. Uh, sort of in the name of the people as opposed to um, people serving a king. Uh, it was more easy to draft people for those armies and they had a what's called a levé en masse which is essentially um, kind of like a levy where they had a lot of the population be drafted. Uh, people who were, who were um, you know, uh, normal folks who were drafted into the army. So this gave French a huge boost to the available manpower as well as the new tactics that they employed. So as I said, huge cavalry strikes, artillery bombardments, and especially how the uh, infantry was organized. It's kind of how, um, not, I, I won't draw a direct parallel, but it's a little bit how Rome did it. So um, the French military revolved around the idea of the corps, and uh, so that was individual units, or groups of, I believe, 10,000 apiece, and they're each supposed to be, it's kind of like the idea of a legion, or a consular army so it's kind of quantized units of the army that are each supposed to be self-sufficient and when they're deployed on the campaign they're supposed to move around and uh, if they were ever attacked they would have enough forces enough supplies to hold out on their own and they would be spaced out such that if one came under attack another one of these corps could come in and reinforce it so on the campaign uh, level it was a lot about maneuverability self-sufficiency and uh, just you know pressing the advantage now when it came to the battlefield itself what the French actually were able to do was bring a lot of people to the field as I told you 
also some tactics where um, instead of lining up linearly you do have infantry four man in massive uh, sort of attack columns so when troops are in column formation they can move much much quicker and so that's what they would do on the battlefield is um, find areas of the uh, of the opposing line that was weak, bombard it with artillery, uh, and then charge in with a massive infantry line. And because of the way that volleys work, um, you know, they would be able to have some troops in the front shoot. Um, the French would respond, but most of the troops who were still in column would just press forward, and they would just exploit that gap, push through, split open the enemy forces, and just keep driving through and crack the opponents forward. Combine that with uh, massive uh, cavalry support strikes in the flanks, and you could have uh, entire you know collapse of uh, one side of the enemy army. So the French were very very good at this, especially the uh, tactical brilliance of Napoleon, and especially his sub generals. They were very very uh, capable, to say the least. So that's a little bit of the history of it for you. In any case, this battle itself does rely a lot on my own mobility and my lot, my own aggressiveness. Over here, I wanted to show you how I did have, you know those uh, cavalry that I had sent to the back? Well, I couldn't attack the Austrians, so what I did is I sent them around back to hopefully go attack the enemy general. So, you'll be seeing me charging him briefly. In any case, some of these Uhlans were able to get behind my line. Yeah, they took out my, uh, my, uh, my uh, what were they, the six-pounders, but uh, not very effective. You know, I'm already here in, in the brunt of the battle. They weren't doing much. And uh, here I'm pressing on the sides, charging again with the bayonet, and here pressing the advantage in the center. And uh, the French do have more troops committed. And over here is where I did land this pretty crucial uh, strike to the rear of the French forces here. I don't think they expected this at all, so I'm going to be able to basically snipe their general. And also go and pick off this artillery unit. So... Given that each team was only allowed one artillery piece, if I'm able to knock these guys out, that's going to be a huge blow to the French force, especially look where they're positioning themselves. They're going to try and be a wedge between my forces and the main confrontation between the French and the British. So this was going to be sort of his holding force to keep me at bay. So I'm able to effectively neutralize that. And then I'm going to charge in on his general. And uh, yeah, I'm going to end up killing him. So that was uh, kind of a nice one-two punch, I would say. Um, and uh, I am kind of dealing with two armies at once. In any case here I do move up a little too close so I'm going to be moving off to the flank. The howitzers here are going to be targeting my uh, infantry in the square formation. That's going to be a problem for me. So I'm going to tell these guys to break out of square and go reinforce. Um, and yeah, pushing the center. My opponents do have thin lines. They're moving more guys up so that's where I retreat and allow my skirmishers who have more of an advantage. Um, they're going to be pushing uh, the attack there. In any case, the infantry of the French are coming back to try and support this. However, as you see on the, you're going to see actually real soon, bottom left of the uh, of the screen, there's going to be an icon that appears that says enemy general killed. Yep, that's right here. So it says that I killed the enemy general right there. So that was perfect. Uh, I was very happy about that. In any case here, my troops were able to destroy those units. I'm going to deploy them over here as a buffer force to keep the French at bay. Now, my guys here who were engaged in... Uh, close quarter combat with their bayonets. They killed the opposing forces, however, um, I'm going to pull them back. Over here, unfortunately, my foot guards are engaged at a distance. I didn't see that he had redeployed his guys, so I'm going to pull them back and allow my militia to um, take most of the brunt of the fight. In any case, my general is taking fire from some stray shots, so I'm going to try and move him out of combat behind that barn. Uh, I don't want my general dying just because of a freak uh, accident just like that. And uh, I'm having a little bit of issues with the movement command. Uh, yeah, in any case, you can see right here I did pull back my line infantry and my skirmishers are the only ones engaging. As I said, once I was able to neutralize my opponent's uh, own skirmishers, that's when I would be able to just toy with him and get an advantage. His own skirmishers are killing my guys, so I'm going to be charging with my general. Over here, I did charge forward with all my forces. Now, you can see my skirmishers in the back are out of ammo, so what I'm going to do is use them to bait those uh, French cavalry in the back. Um, they were able to steamroll the buffer forces I had placed at the back. Um, so that was uh, relatively unfortunate, but they did slow them down and it made me aware of this uh, rear attack. So my guys who are out of ammo, yeah, they're going to get steamrolled, but uh, they're kind of there to bait the French into this charge. I'm going to form up in square and hopefully that should be enough to uh, slow down his cavalry. And uh, my own general is going to be engaging with the enemy uh, artillery, hopefully to knock them out. And yeah, the French troops right here charging right into my squares. Now it does disrupt my formation, it allows the Austrians to put on more fire. But uh, I think overall it's going to go well for me, especially with these troops over here charging from the back. Now I'm going to set up a clever trap. So my guys here still have their deployables. So if you guys don't know, uh, something that was cool back then is you have your skirmishers. They're able to sort of pull out of their pockets giant stakes and put them in the ground. So these are going to be um, 
deployable barricades essentially that uh, uh, are spikes to ward off cavalry. So I'm going to deploy those, pull my general back behind them, and I know that the enemy general is uh, probably going to want to charge into my troops, and I don't think my opponent is going to be looking closely enough to see those, so I'm going to try and bait him into that. We'll see if he bites. In any case, I was able to destroy the French cavalry. You can see my guys shooting in all directions. Going to quickly reform uh, in order to have more effective lines of fire. Take out these annoying Austrian troops. And here we go, the general charging in. He does get some of my light troops. Perfect, they're drawn in. And now they're going to start dying <laughs> at the hands of my pikes. And my general is just staring at them from behind a couple feet back. Yeah, you can see right there the icon. I killed his general uh, with, a, with a spear coming out of someone's pocket. So... Pretty cool way to kill a general. Uh, it's little touches like that that I like to do on the battlefield when I have the chance. Anyways, we're going to be neutralizing the remainder of the Austrian foot here. My foot guards leading the charge. Those guys are going to be doing a lot of damage. And uh, the howitzer right there was starting to get off, I believe, some canister shot. Still not within range, and uh, they finally flee. So that's going to be basically it for the Austrian force. Now, they do have this one lone unit, so I'm not going to try and lose too many men to this. So I'm going to be... Um, moving my general around the side. He's going to try and attack from the the, the the side and the rear. Militia moving around here. Skirmishers are going to move up to soak up the fire. But again, the French are deploying more and more of these guys, so at least I'm diverting more troops from the, the fight to the other side of the map where there's going to be the, uh, the British forces holding that bridge point. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and look at the fight here. So the British are going to be moving up. They've been mostly uncommitted for the rest of the, most of the battle. Um, right here, this is Puff Daddy. He was my ally. I'm not sure what he was up to. Um, he didn't really do anything, and now he just dropped from the game. So the computer on that side is going to be rushing forward. It's not going to be very good. They're going to have a lot of losses. So it's going to be mostly me against the, the, uh, the opponents. Anyways, they charge in here into my infantry. I am able to partially get into square formation. Uh, the French do land some pretty good strikes. It's allowing the Austrians right here to get some good shots on me. Uh, I my musketeers are in position. They're picking them off, and now my general is going to come in and uh, do a good amount of damage. And uh, these fusilier, I'm just going to send them in with the uh, the bayonets. So hopefully, take out those horses. And uh, I really do like the generals uh, in this Rome. You have uh, in each battle. I think you can choose from either th three or four levels of the general in varying cost. Um, and with each increase in cost, you have more abilities, so they have a sort of an influence aura that's visible, and they have rally abilities and influence abilities, stuff like that. There's no leadership or um, specific attack or strategist type of thing. It's all just uh, about the influence of the general on the battlefield, and you can see his commands here. So I have rally, and then I have uh, something that gives my boost, my infantry a... Uh, uh, particular units a specific boost so I kind of like that allows you to uh, invest in various levels of generals as opposed to Rome 2 which is where basically everyone goes for the leadership general and sometimes the warrior general I wish there was you know you had those classes and you could invest in specific levels of each of those so you maybe if you had like the top level warrior class he would be just like a total badass uh, guy who could rampage through forces um, which would be cool to see but it would come at a higher cost Anyways, my guys are shooting at the fleeing troops. I'm going to tell them to turn around. I won't want them to accidentally hit my own general. I only have seven troops left in that unit. So he is pretty susceptible to, you know, um, being outright killed or uh, panic. In any case, I move my guys over here. This is going to be the remainder of the other side of the battlefield. So the AI who took over for the British was basically destroyed. They only have a couple troops left. Here the combined French and Austrian forces were able to mop up the enemy who took over the British. These are the remaining troops of my side, so they're going to be taking shots at the, the old guard of the French here who are cresting the hill. Uh, and this is it. This is what the battle came down to. So uh, four armies comes down to essentially, what is this, one, two, three, four, five units here. And uh, I was able to contest my side of the battlefield. Basically two, v two and a half armies because the French kept reinforcing on the side. So I took those guys out and came over here and helped clean up the, the rest of the fight. So very, very cool battle. That's why I decided to show it to you guys. A little long-winded, but uh, definitely worth playing. I really enjoyed it. And I'm loving these uh, these uh, different Total War games. So I hope to bring those to you guys because I do definitely enjoy the variety of tactics. Switching it up It's definitely very interesting. And hopefully, um, you know, we can bring you additional history lessons on this stuff. So in the comments below, let me know what you think of these types of battles, uh, which other Total Wars do you want me to play? I think at this point in time, I only own on the Steam library, I think I only have Empire, Napoleon, Shogun 2, and Rome 2. I used to have Medieval 2, 
and Rome 1, but those were only on disc and I lost those thus far. I, I guess I could purchase them and play online, uh, although I am a little rusty in those. But uh, anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this battle. Hope you guys enjoyed as well. Now we're going to go and go ahead to the uh, conclusion menu just to see the kills. So yeah, you can see right here, um, my forces, I had 1,400. I killed 1,400. I lost uh, 1,100 of my guys. And uh, yeah, you can see my how my uh, six pound horse artillery did not get that many kills. Uh, most of my kills came down to lancers and various musketeers and different types of units. Uh, some of the fusiliers got uh, 220 kills. In any case, that's good to me. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time.